Let's move directly to our top story now, which is the video that's emerged of the Princess of Wales shopping over the weekend as she smiled in the company of her husband. The couple are dressed casually and both carried bags from a farm shop near Windsor. But despite the proof that Kate is in London and recovering well, crazy conspiracy theories about it are still running rampant online. Cynics have tried to say it's a body double, walking with William in the clip, or that that is not the royal family at all. Joining me in the studio to discuss this, Talk TV's royal editor Sarah Hewson. Hi, Sarah. And columnist from the Times, Hugo Rivkin. Good to have you both here. Um, I know what I think about all of this, but I'm much more interested in what you think. So let's start with you, Sarah. I mean, that is Kate walking with Wills, and you say that um, Sky have done their own special kind of test on Put it through face matching technology at TMZ in the United States, who also published uh, this video along with The Sun, have analysed the metadata on it to say that it was at Windsor Farm Shop, it was on Saturday. It is William and Kate out for a walk casually on Saturday. They happened to be spotted by a fellow shopper yeah. who got out his mobile phone and filmed it. That's not anything out of the ordinary. And that would have happened in the past. It's just that it wouldn't have been published by a newspaper because it's them in their private time. Mm -hmm. But the news argument in publishing this has become sufficiently strong given those conspiracy theories and people not believing that anything that they've seen is her and certainly, uh, you know, not helped by the Mother's Day photograph uh, last weekend, the Sun made the decision to publish this. But as you said, it hasn't stopped the conspiracy theories because there are still people there who say, no, it was AI, it was a body double, it's not her at all. Right, let's move on to Hugo because this is, I mean, to me, I, I, I'm, I'm absolutely bewildered and perplexed by the whole thing and, and actually, have little patience for serious news organisations or media outlets taking this kind of nonsensical um, theorising and, cons and, and, and conspiracy kind of creation seriously, because mm. that is Kate. You know, they, we can see it's Kate. It is Kate. She's not a hologram. She's not a body double. She's not a, a, an inflatable. She's an actual person walking with her husband exactly where she said she was going to be, which is one mile from her own home, Adelaide Cottage. It's not like she's suddenly pitched up in the Himalayas or there she is in, you know, Seychelles or she's she's just exactly where she said she was and just where she's supposed to be doing exactly what you'd imagine somebody convalescing from a yeah. serious operation to be doing. In other words, pootling about the nearest farm shop where she feels familiar. She knows it well. It's down the road. It makes absolute sense and it bears out everything that they've said. So how are we discussing this evening? <laughs> Look, pe people don't want the truth. They want a story. It's right. much more fun. People also don't realise this. It's part, of, part of one of the many sort of malign phenomenons of the internet age. People don't realise that they're the problem. It's like the whole, the, the old, the old saying, uh, you're not in traffic, you are traffic. Right. People think they're all just one individual person going, hey, this is funny, this is weird, yes. maybe this has happened, without really anything to base it on. And when you have millions of people doing this, when you have, it would appear, most of America doing this, yeah. it becomes something quite huge and, dam and damaging. And also something that's very hard for the palace to kind of respond to, because they can't be, they shouldn't be bullied into putting her on display when she's clearly convalescing from a, from a rather, rather horrible operation. And yet, you know, they do, I guess they have a degree of responsibility for sparking this with the, with the farce over the photograph. They wouldn't have expected it to spiral into all this. It's very hard to know what they should do to put it, it except, except if, and, and I'm absolutely certain this is the case, all of this is utterly idiotic keyboard warriors with much too much time on their hands and no evidence at all for yeah. anything they, they suggest or they surmise or they pretend they know. They don't know anything at all. They're just making it up. They're just being as revolting as most trolls well, are, aren't they? Most of them. Some of them are being humorous and saying it's a Brazilian bum lift. We know it's not. Uh, and, and lots of them are being much more malicious and malign than that. But if, if that is the level of it, you know, lots of people who know nothing about it talking absolute rot about someone they don't know. Why does anyone have to respond to any of it? Well, they, I mean, they don't and they aren't, right? Well, but, except I mean, they kind but, of are, aren't they? Well, you could, you could, another way you could look at this is you've got a lot of people who are confusing themselves with investigative journalists <laughs> in a situation that's sparked actually by Kate slightly confusing herself with a photographer. And if she, hadn't, if she hadn't done this, if she hadn't sparked this, if she hadn't sort of stumbled into putting out a badly photoshopped image, the, you know, then none of this... I think, it, it, I mean, hang on, except they, they Sarah... They should have learned to be more careful. Except it had already started. It, it, it had, had started already started. It had already started, but you can ignore that 
when you think that this is going on on social media, but what propelled it into the mainstream was that Mother's Day photograph and the kill notices issued by the picture agencies. There were a couple of other mistakes as well that have been made by Kensington Palace, and that was when Prince William pulled out at the last minute uh, of his godfather's memorial service, and there was no comment on, on why. And, but but and then, then hang on, but what about PR on the handling day? of that? I remember you handling it magnificently on the day, Sarah, and you were saying, well, it could be an upset tummy. Yeah. You know, it could be something that, you know, just... The the, the kinds of frailties that all flesh is heir to. You know, something happens, Absolutely. you fall down the stairs, your toe's bleeding, you just can't go because you have to have a couple of stitches in it. You know, your child, phone. they phone from school to say your child's ill and being very sick and the child's upset. You go because the child's mother's just had an operation, you feel you better go and pick the child up. You know, those kinds of ordinary things. And in a way, why should the palace say what the matter is? If no. it really has got an upset stomach, let's imagine, and this is me completely hypothesising, mm. but let's say he did, then it doesn't behove anyone to, 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 to subject him to the indignity of saying, well, he's had to pull out of his godfather's memorial service because he's just just got a case of the, you know, whatever but, it is, what that, an upset stomach, is it? Not, not suitable. But what that did was mean that what I would describe as normally sane people did start asking questions about where is Kate. And those conspiracy theories that normally exist in the darker corners of the internet actually started to trickle into normal life. And that was a problem uh, for Kensington Palace. Now we're in a situation where, look, there are people who just will not believe anything that they see or are told now. You can't do anything mm. about that. You cannot be responding to that. We've got this footage out there. It's very reassuring. She's striding along uh, with uh, William near their home. And, and that's it now. You can't, you cannot be sort of trying to deal with what's going on on mm. social media. There's an entire industry that's yeah. built up around this. Yeah. Well, I mean, nobody's saying it's reasonable. No. Nobody's saying it's sane. But these are the waters they swim in. They are public figures who exist, who thrive, because of the image they present to the British public and to the world. They exist to be looked at and talked about by the public. That is their role as, as, as the royal family. And so they need to ex exercise a degree of care about the manner in which they allow that to happen. And they've slightly bodged this from the start. It's not their fault, they don't deserve it, but there are things they could have done to make it not happen quite so badly. OK, what should they or could they have done? Well, they could have not put out a manipulated photograph. Yeah, but they that, could honestly, have, they it had already have... kicked off long before that, though. There was already a whole Where is Kate industry they... before the picture. Sure. There was a hell of a lot of completely irrational they... okay. and irresponsible be... speculation before the picture. So the picture they... definitely made it worse, no question. But before that, what should they have done? They could be more rigorous about the manner in which they communicate to the, to the public. It's very sweet royals running their own Instagram accounts and things right. like that. Actually, there, there used to be a system, you would know better than I do, about the, the, the manner in which, in which the royals would communicate with the press, use official photographers, use official agencies, mm. not do these things themselves. And I think that is one of the changes we will likely see now, because right. we've now got picture agencies who are reviewing all of the handout images that they've been given, taken by the Princess of Wales, for example, in the past of the children, or, you know, we'll probably talk about the, the late Queen mm. with the great-grandchildren as well. They're now all being reviewed and looked at, and I think in the future, there will be a lot of scrutiny. And I think they'd be very wise to just get in an independent mm. professional photographer who takes the photograph and justify, verifies it and says, this is legit. All right, let's 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 talk a little bit about the photograph we're now looking at, yeah. which is of the late queen with with her grandchildren and great-grandchildren, isn't it? Yes. And, and, and so why are we suddenly looking at that now? Why is that suddenly relevant today? Getty Images have now issued an editor's note on this. They haven't gone as far as the kill notice that we got last weekend, but an editor's note to say that this was digitally altered at source. So this was a photograph that was taken in August 2022, the late Queen's last summer at Balmoral, with her great-grandchildren and two of her grandchildren. It was taken by the Princess of Wales, mm -hmm. published in April last year on what would have been the Queen's 97th birthday, and it now appears that there were several alterations made to that photograph. Probably not surprising because you've got 11 people sitting exactly. there and they're all smiling and all looking the same way, so we might have perhaps predicted that there would have to have been some changes to it. But isn't, isn't this time, though, to, to, to just grow up about the whole thing and just say there are alterations and there are alterations. Mm -hmm. So there are alterations which are the bit where one of the children is, is blinking, winking, sticking his or her tongue out, and you replace that with a picture of the child where the child isn't sticking their tongue out or someone's looking the other way, you, you replace that. So in other words, it's completely legitimate. All the pictures were taken on the same day, at the same time, by the same person. It's just some were a little less flattering. One was in the dark, one was, you know, picking yeah. their nose at the, at the crucial moment. So, you know, But they're all exactly the same from the same batch on the same day. It's 100% kosher, it's just 
That's a better picture if you... And then alterations, which are not OK because you're photoshopping in someone who wasn't there at all, someone who's dead is resurrected and put in the picture, somebody who was actually in prison looks as if they're there, yeah. but they weren't really. There are alterations and alterations, aren't there? All of this would make sense if you were talking about a normal person. Right. If Joe Biden put out a doctored photo of his family to make them look better, people would talk about it and be a little bit shocked. If Rishi Sunak did it, dare I say it, Vanessa, if you did it yourself... But I the, 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 the paper, picture me on Instagram, might... I'm doing it like this from a, from a really flattering angle. I'm putting that lovely She's... Paris filter on so I look a bit She's... better than I really look, a bit younger, and I don't care who knows. I think everyone expects it. She's... It really is me, but I look a bit better in the picture than I really look, obviously. She's, She's going to be the queen. He's going to be the king. It's not super for her to, to develop a reputation as a slightly, I mean, even a naive amateur photographer who is who is sending out fakes to the public. That I think that's long term. But how that's is just that not super. Fake? We, we if it's the to, same batch of photos that you were taking anyway. We need it, to know that we can believe what we're seeing, and we need to be able to trust it on face value from our royal family. And I think that's the difference. And I also think there's a bit of a difference between the photo of the late queen with her great grandchildren that was taken some months before it was eventually released as a nice. Well, it would have been her birthday. Yeah and the image of Kate and the children, because the stakes on that were so high, coming as it did as the first image to show us, look, I'm here and I'm OK. And where I think that, you know, big mistakes were made with putting out a doctored photograph and not being advised that that is just not OK. I mean, don't you think one of the elements in all of this is that because the public wants something doesn't mean the public's entitled yes. to get it. Oh, sure. So, so when, when the announcement was, Kate is having a serious abdominal operation, she's going to be in hospital for two weeks. That's a very long time, even for a serious operation, to be in hospital, particularly when you're a member of the royal family and you've got staff at home and lots of people to look after you. Very, very unusual. So we surmise it was a pretty damn serious mm. operation or she wouldn't have been there for two weeks. And she's not going to be seen doing any public duties at all, or in fact, seen at all, till after Easter then you might say the public should just back off. And, you know, they'd like to see her. We want to see her. We're used to seeing her. We're used to a constant feed of pictures and information. However, we've been told why we're not going to see her and we're not going to see her. So just pipe down rather than it should have been differently managed. They ought to have done something else. They said that. They said it's a serious operation. We're not going to see her. Why isn't that OK? Why isn't that enough and why does anybody feel that they failed that in that in that well in that i'm not sure they did that should be enough that that should be okay i feel immensely sorry for her oh, yeah. you know she's going, going going through a uh, going through a horrible time but there have been missteps and she is in a position where she should she she and the people around her should be more careful and about sarah them. do you think that it might well happen because I, I we've started to hear haven't we you, you'll confirm if this is true or not um we've started to hear that kate is intending to be transparent at some point about what she's been going through at least I think we've heard Well, re that. even right at the beginning, actually, Kensington Palace said that she might decide at some stage to talk about what has happened right. here. But that will be done in her time and in her way. Right. We know that there are plans underway at the moment about her comeback into public life, how they choreograph and how they manage that. Mm. She may well talk about what has gone on and what she's been through. Yes. And I think then a lot of people will... will be that's what feeling I was going pretty to ask. guilty mm -hmm. Do you about think? the kind of things that they've been saying. And, you know, as we've said all along, she is fully entitled to med medical privacy. Yes. We don't have a right to know what is going on. Mm -hmm. And Kensington Palace were clear from the start. The problem is in this information void, it took off. I don't think anyone could have predicted yes. quite how mad this could well, have become. Quite. It's bonkers. But do, but do you in know? America, all around the world, yeah. this has been headline news. There are much bigger things going on in it's, the world. Do you think, Hugo, you know, people might have cause, you know, depending on what it is she says and when she says it and what she says and, you know, how, how shocked people are or to how sympathetic people are when they hear what she's actually been through. Do you think people might have to make all sorts of public apologies? I mean, the sort of public figures who've really demeaned themselves and her by saying all sorts of horrible speculative things about her. I mean, you'd hope, but they won't because people don't. And even if they do, there'll be an army of internet lunatics will be like, oh, somebody's got to them. There's a deeper story here. That people think, always think there's some bigger conspiracy. Really, this is an internet story. Yeah. This is about people egging each other on, encouraging each other, whole communities that base up around, that spring up around false beliefs, which we've seen increasingly over the last few years from, from politics to pandemics. It's, it's exactly the same thing. I was thinking about the, the search for Nicola Bully, and you remember the internet sleuths who all felt that they knew exactly what had happened. And, you know, people who wouldn't have been connected before in any way coming together 
and what about people who arrived industry? on the scene at the scene of the crime and exactly. started trying to paddle around in the river and God knows what? You know, and we're in a completely different age yes. from somebody sitting in their basement, you know, tapping away on a, mm. you know, writing in green ink, in green ink yeah. or cutting pictures out and making a scrapbook. Yes. You know, we're in a totally different world where, you know, these people do come together and that has been very, very, very difficult for Kensington Palace to manage. I just don't think they can. So I, th I think in this kind of uh, universe where people keep on trotting out this old adage and cliche about be kind, you just think this is a young woman who is, has said, you know, they have said she's unwell, leave her alone, stop, stop thinking about where she might be. She said exactly where she said she was, just at home with the children and her but husband. What the hell? People have, people have never been kind. If you think about the, the urban legends that would spread around people in the 80s, they yeah. take, they'd take months and years to happen. Go back to the 60s. There was the, this conspiracy that Paul McCartney was dead. Remember that? <laughs> I don't remember it. I wasn't born. I'm sure people, people remember it. Um, you know, that kind of thing happened, but these took months and years and were yes. whispered in playground and chatted about in pubs. Now they happen fast, they happen online, and they're unignorable, which is why we're talking about them now. And we're talking about it with... Kate now, but actually the Sussexes would say this was happening to Meghan for a long time, yes, yes. a lot earlier. Absolutely. So we, we, we have Will's out and about today, Prince William, and he has mentioned Kate. Yes, he's in Sheffield and he's attending engagements along with his Homewoods, his big homelessness uh, project. And uh, he was talking there about young people and about education and about uh, children in the early years. And he said, oh, that's very much my wife's area. She should be here and sitting here mm -hmm. uh, alongside it. Uh, he got a, a lot of cheers and uh, a great reception from the public there. I think a lot more attention on this engagement because of what's going on, that the huge focus there is on this couple at the moment. Uh, smiling, looking relaxed, but I think, you know, Things are pretty tough for them. Right. You brought up the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan, in this conversation. And mm -hmm. we, we heard yesterday that the writer Sally Bedell Smith has said and likened Meghan's personality and character and everything else to Wallace Simpson, uh, the Duchess of Windsor. And, uh, and I wonder whether you think that is just a writer fancifully struggling <laughs> to find some kind of parallel with, 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 with somebody else in history, or whether you think there are any indicators that that's true. Let's, let's, why don't we ask you? Good. No, I don't think that's true. I mean, I guess there's sort of circumstantial similarities in this situation, but I mean, they were they were they were friends with fascists. They sucked up to Hitler. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, Meghan, for for all her faults, is a sort of peerless liberal. You know, thoroughly woke, heads politically in the other direction. Doesn't seem to sort of wish any harm on on democracy or or Britain generally. So I think that that's a little harsh. Do you think it's a, an unfair leap? An yeah, I, mean, I think it's made a good headline, hasn't it? Mm. It was a comment made at a literary festival promoting her, her new book about King George VI. Uh, and what uh, she has said is that um, Wallace Simpson was narcissistic, controlling and domineering, and she had a weak husband, and you could draw similarities with Meghan and her husband, mm -hmm. Harry. And I suppose if you're, if you're Me Meghan and Harry and you hear this, you would be not just horrified, not just angry, but probably hurt too. To be honest, I think they've heard it all yeah. already. Um, I, I'm not sure what more they can hear, but we do know yeah. that they do listen, they do read, I, they I do take it all on board. I don't think you can call him weak. You might not think he's made the right decisions, mm -hmm. but I don't think you can call him weak for making them. I think he's made. He's been very brave in what he's done in his life. He may have. He may have made the wrong decisions in doing it, but I don't think you can call it any of that weakness. Very interesting and also quite horrifying, the whole conversation, I think. Thank you both very much indeed.